Hi, good morning everybody. Hey, I wanted to get on here this morning. Hopefully you can see me and hear me okay. Uh, I just want to talk today about uh, autoimmune disease and your hormones. This is a question that came up by one of the members in the group who mentioned that they have an autoimmune condition and did not know for sure whether or not their hormones were related to that or not. So I did want to get on here and talk about that today. So if you're joining me live, just say hi in the chat. I'd love to hear from you and know that you're here. I'm kind of looking at two screens here and making sure that I can see things okay as any comments come in. So I just want to talk a little bit more about the connection between autoimmune disease and your hormones today. So according to the Frontier Endocrinology, um, uh, hi Darlene, good to see you. Uh, so it's so nice of you to be here with me. So I wanted to just kind of delve into this a little bit. I've dealt with um, you know, a lot of women suffering from autoimmune conditions over the years and wondering if their hormones could be related to this. And according to the Frontier Endocrinology publication from April 29th of 2019, uh, they did look at the connection between autoimmune disease and the different uh, times when this can occur throughout a woman's life. And in fact, um, I probably don't have to tell you, women have um, a greater incidence of autoimmune disease than men. In fact, they believe approximately 70% of the, 78% of the cases of autoimmune disease actually occur in women. And in their um, publication, I just want to highlight some of the key points that they mention in this and then I'm going to talk a little bit about triggers and and the hormone connection and so forth but they say that women undergo three major endocrino endocrinological transitions what this means is changes in your hormones those occur at puberty during pregnancy and around menopause and I have certainly seen that as well sometimes I've seen women develop a thyroid condition of uh, following pregnancy or during pregnancy, or they develop a thyroid condition or an autoimmune condition after a pregnancy. I've also seen this around the time of perimenopause and menopause occurring in women as well. I've seen them develop not only thyroid conditions, um, certain, um, you know, pretty significant autoimmune conditions such as uh, lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, asthma. These are just some of the things that I've seen. Um, they go on to say in this publication that the endocrine transitions exert a significant influence on what we call innate and adaptive immunity. Uh, so this affects our immune system and its interaction between what they call our hormonal milieu, which is basically your hormonal environment. And this can trigger pro-inflammatory, what we call cytokines to occur. And if you have inflammation in your body, this is when it can really tend to throw things off. They go on to say that the concentration dependent effects of estrogen on the immune system and the role of progesterone and androgens, this would be like DHEA, testosterone, leptin, oxytocin, and prolactin have a role in their interplay with the immune system. And this delicate balance that uh, can occur or be thrown off when there's some sort of change in the hormonal picture. And that in turn can be one factor in triggering autoimmune disease. It certainly isn't the only factor. It's one of many things that can be at play. And then uh, also uh, I did find in another publication uh, where there was a group of scientists from Turku Center for Biotechnology in the University of Georgia from May 2018 that reported a relationship between estrogen, again, and autoimmune's effect on what we call T helper cells. So this, again, is affecting um, our immune system and a, pot a potential trigger there for autoimmunity. So, you know, it's 
certainly something that um, you may have suspected and I've certainly suspected for years because of the timing where some of these autoimmune conditions seem to show up or reveal themselves can be always seems like around a, a change in the hormones, you know, a big hormone fluctuation. Um, we also believe the scientists out there that are looking at this that, you know, 10% of your risk of autoimmune triggers is actually due to your genes, only 10%. The other 90% of that is influenced by environmental factors. Now, these are, you know, some things that you can potentially change or alter in your life. Some of them you're just exposed to in your environment. And, you know, short of taking yourself out of that environment, are you going to be able to change that? So all hormones can be impacted and most the most common hormones that can be impacted by these environmental factors of which um, I'll talk about as well include your estrogen uh, that can occur as a result of these environmental factors are things like <clears throat> excuse me um, estrogen dominance I see a lot of estrogen dominance happening and I do feel there's significant environmental triggers at play in this high cortisol this can be uh, due to high stress a lot of us are under a lot of stress and that raises cortisol which can raise blood sugar which can in turn affect insulin levels um, we can also see from these environmental triggers potentially uh, effects on thyroid function. So one of the ways that maybe I've seen uh, a change in thyroid function occur is also around these transitional points like puberty, pregnancy, and perimenopause and menopause is um, it's just, you know, women develop a thyroid condition. Is it because of the connection between the adrenal stress and the thyroid? Is it due to underlying um, infections that occur? I know that when I've seen women in my practice in the past, that if they have Hashimoto's, which I, I regularly want to know that and test for, uh, what are the potential triggers for that? And we're going to talk about the six common autoimmune triggers here shortly. Um, then there are imbalances in DHEA, which that has to do with adrenal function, and low vitamin D. This is a really key thing. Vitamin D is more than a vitamin. It's a pro-hormone. And like thyroid hormone, it's on virtually every cell in your body and can therefore affect every part of your body so if i have a woman with an autoimmune condition or not i think it's very important to check your vitamin d levels um, because you want to make sure you have optimal vitamin d levels because this helps support your immune system it's important to your hormone balance as well and you know if you want to know an optimal level of vitamin d um, there's different opinions on this, but overall the, the consensus within the functional medicine community anyway is that you have a level between 50 to 75. That's optimal. Now your lab reports are going to show normal be, be 30 to 100 generally. So what are some of the six major um, autoimmune triggers or categories, if you will, so one is definitely hormone imbalances. So yes, when that question is asked, wondering if there's a relationship between the autoimmune condition that this person has and hormone balance, absolutely. This is one of the things that has been identified as a major autoimmune trigger. Others include uh, food intolerances. So how do you know if you have a food intolerance that can create inflammation in the body, then in turn affect your immune system, um, where it becomes overactive? Um, one is you can do food sensitivity testing. There's different tests out there. There's pros and cons to different tests. I'm certainly biased on which one I like um, to use and feel it's one of the more accurate in my opinion. Now, the other way to do this is you do a food elimination diet where you take out food. Some of the big ones are like gluten, dairy, soy, eggs, corn, sugar, 
and you remove those from your diet for two to four weeks and then you slowly reintroduce those. Now, what I have found um, in my personal experience with this is that those may not be your triggers at all. Your triggers may be something like spinach or strawberries or carrots, in other words, healthy foods. Um, the next autoimmune trigger is what we call leaky gut or dysbiosis or imbalance in the gut microbiota or the good versus bad bacteria balance in your gut. And so there are ways to test for that as well. I like to use GI map testing for this. And if we can correct some of those imbalances and allow that intestinal membrane in the gut to start healing, the body can become less reactive to what you are consuming in your diet. Of course, I recommend eating organic um, because then you're gonna lessen the toxic burden on your body, and this is another trigger, toxins. Um, and all of that goes through the gut, or we inhale these things through the air, and in the gut, of the, the intestinal membrane gets broken down, and what we call lipopolysaccharides get through that and create inflammation and can create havoc wherever. And so sometimes when talking to someone about an autoimmune condition, and if I bring up their gut health, and they may not have any digestive symptoms at all, it's putting that connection together of how what starts in that gut can affect different areas of the body. It may be the source of your chronic headaches or your joint pain, and you might not have any digestive issues at all. So feeding our body with the right nutrients, um, ideally organic as possible, whole foods, is really important. And I mentioned toxins. Toxins can come from the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, and what we put on our skin. So this is where we want to use natural um, skincare products, cleaning products, um, eating organically, not spraying our yards with chemicals. Um, chemicals uh, definitely to me are the canary in the coal mine when it comes to women's hormonal health and um, a, potentially there to a trigger for autoimmunity. Then underlying infections can be a trigger. I certainly have seen this uh, like with Hashimoto's. Oftentimes, if I have seen um, a woman in the past and they have Hashimoto's, a lot of times I'll check and see if ask, or ask them, did you have mono when you were a child? And they may not know if they had mono because it might have been passed off as um, a strep throat or you know just a viral illness where in actuality they may have had uh, Epstein-Barr, which is mono, and we think that you have the virus, it goes into remission, and that's the end of it. But for some people it's not. It, you can have a, a stress trigger some point in your life that um, theoretically could reactivate this virus and cause this low-grade simmering effect, thereby triggering or being an, in addition to some of these other triggers, um, starting the process of the autoimmune tri disease trigger. So it's really kind of complicated. And then the sixth uh, trigger is stress. And I always says stress is at the root of every single illness and every single thing I've ever seen in my practice has a str stress at its base. So. In my Path to Hormone Health uh, group program, we actually dive into these six autoimmune triggers, but we had, we, we're addressing them from the hormonal imbalance standpoint, and they're all interconnected. So we look at them and we refer to them as the roadblocks to preventing your hormone recovery. And this includes the health of your gut, the foods that you're eating, the toxins that you're exposed to, underlying infections, the stress component um, and how all that interplays in affecting not only your hormonal balance but if you're suffering potentially from an autoimmune condition and how that can play a role as well. So how do we begin to find balance when we have not only a hormone imbalance but maybe an autoimmune condition as well? Well first and foremost you want to get accurate testing. 
whether this means, say, you have Hashimoto's, getting a complete thyroid panel, uh, getting your vitamin D level checked, um, having hormone testing done. Now, there are different ways of hormone testing. There's blood, there's saliva, there's urine, there's pros and cons to each of those. Within the uh, Path to Hormone Health Group program, we really dive into the differences between these and why I prefer one testing over another and what the differences are and what those tests can reveal to us as well. We really dive into looking at nutrition and how do we support our hormones in a healthy way through what we're eating um, in our diet every day and what's the best way to go about that and how do we start making um, small changes and steps to get us headed in the right direction to improving our hormonal balance through our nutrition. We also talk about the gut health not only in in the program but also if you're looking at trying to get to some of the key areas that you need to address and that's these triggers that are feeding um, the hormone imbalances or feeding your autoimmune condition uh, stress and sleep and then we look at um, you know what are different ways to help support the body when you do have an imbalance yes you need to address the the, the stress you need to be sleeping, you need to be eating healthy, uh, but sometimes that's not enough and we need additional support through um, various healing herbs can be, be really great and beneficial as well. So I hope that this helps um, to answer that question and I do plan to get on here um, periodically and answer some of the other questions that I've had people um, share with me about their hormonal health that they're wondering about. And um, I'd love it if you comment below or ask any questions that you have and share your experiences here as well. All right, you guys have a great day. Bye.